Hi guys, welcome back to another tutorial. So, in today's video, I'm going to be showing us how to make the basic trouser block, okay? So, I'm going, I have two different kind of handouts here. So, I'm just going to be, one of them is, the method in one of these handouts is really, really very, very complicated, okay? So, I'm just going to be showing us, I'm going to be adding the two methods together to simplify it to show us, okay? So, here is a trouser block from this uh, handout, so I'll show us what they have on the other one trouser block okay on this under this classic tailor trouser block so they showed us how to achieve it like you want to make it a pencil trouser how to make a perfect basic trouser and how to take a perfect measurement for your trouser okay so this one also explains the same thing but this one is more simplified than the other one but i'm just going to be adding like the two methods together to make it really really simple for you guys to follow okay so the first thing that we're going to be doing i'm going to explain to us how to take i know one of the problems that a lot of people find when they are making trousers like most of my students always ask me about crotch depth crotch depth that is always always a very very difficult question when it comes to crotch depth okay so you can measure the client crotch depth or your crotch depth okay you can see this picture here i don't know if you guys can see clearly so let's see okay you see the way this drawing here is sitting so you need to ask your client or yourself you need to sit to stand like you're sitting to stand you are not resting i don't know if you guys understand what i mean by sitting to stand so you are going to now measure for your crotch depth and take your tape measure and measure it down you can see this line around here so this is this person here right now is sitting to stand and you take the tape measure and ma and put your tape at the top of the seat not this is not a resting back seat it's just like a stool you have to sit like in a stool and you sit to stand and you measure your crotch depth so sometimes like i always tell of my student when they talk of highways uh and all of that i tell them where you want your trouser to sit depends on you like me, I always like to wear my trouser above my belly button. Some people wear their trouser or their skirt exactly at their belly button, while some wear theirs exactly on their waist, almost looking like a low waist. So, is your preference and is your client's preference? You need to ask that person, where do they normally put their trouser, guys? That is a very, very important question. You need to ask that person where they put their trouser. That is exactly where you are going to be putting your tape. So for someone like me that always likes to take my trouser high, even if I'm buying a jean from the market, it has to go up high above my belly button. So I know exactly where to place my tape and bring it down to the stool, okay? So that is how you find out for your crotch depth. Just ask the client and you yourself also, you want to know where you put your trouser and you take your tape measure and ask someone to measure that for you. So after finding out your crotch depth, the next thing you want to do, you want to also find out how long you want your trouser to be, okay? So, the first thing I'm going to be doing, I'm going to show us the measurement that we're going to be using for this tutorial today, okay? And the measurement that you need to make your trouser. You need your crotch depth. So the crotch depth, this trouser is actually for a client, okay? I'm just going to be putting my client's measurement here, okay? The crotch depth for this client is 11 inches, okay? So, and the length of this trouser, and the length of this trouser is 40 inches, okay? And the hips is 44. And the knee you're going to also take your tape measure and measure around the knee, okay? And another important thing is when you are taking a trouser measurement, you don't take your trouser measurement tight, just like you're making a fitted dress or any other thing fitted. Even if it's going to be a fitted trouser, you are not using a stretch fabric. You have to put some ease around your tape. You have to loosen your tape around when you're taking your trouser measurement. Now I'm talking about the knee and the... Uh, I'm talking about the knee, okay? So, but if you are make, measuring your hip, you can take your hip up, up, accurately. So now, I'm taking the knee measurement, and I'm, the next measurement we need is the tie measurement. So the knee that we're going to be working with today is 18 inches. And the tie measurement, which is very, very important, I hear some people like to call it lap, okay? 
time measurement is another thing that plays almost 17 percent role in making your trouser successful as well tie and crush they go hand in hand okay you need to make sure those two measurements are perfect and they are right your tie measurement and your crotch measurement okay so when you are taking your tie measurement don't snuggle your tape around the person's your client's body make sure you put some ease around your tape make sure you take your tape as you are measuring it you you let your tape loose around that part of the body okay the lap and you use the fullest part of the lap okay you are going to measure one side of the lap so and the uh, tie that we're going to be working with today is 30 inches okay so and the and for the knee for the ankle okay so i'll explain something to you guys about the ankle here okay so like i say for a normal straight pants i always say this and it works perfectly all my students have tried this it works perfectly except you want yours to be wider or to be more taper depends on the kind of fabric you are using and depends on what you like but for a normal basic straight trouser it's 14 inches as a standard okay but even my client likes 14 inches that's exactly what i'm going to be using for her because that's exactly the same trouser I made for her previously, I used 14 inches as the ankle width, the wideness of the ankle, and she liked it, and, I need, and she wanted me to repeat the same thing for her. So, but this doesn't mean that you cannot make it wider if you want, or you cannot make it taper if you want, okay? So, that means you have, if, it's, if it's not lesser than 14 inches, it's going to not be going to like a pencil trouser, okay? That means you are making it more taper at the bottom, but for a normal basic straight pants, it's 14 inches as a standard okay so we're using 14 inches for the ankle we're using the knee which is 18 inches and we're using hip of 44 and length of 40 inches and the crotch depth is 11 and make sure to get all of this measurement right so for you to be able to start drafting your trouser the first thing you want to do the crotch depth is 11 which is fine that one is a is a length and the length is 40 i'm going to be adding two inches for hemming this is your choice there's no standard measurement for hemming your trouser but when you want to make a trouser it's, it's better that you have a wide hem it makes it look small full and beautiful at the bottom but it's also still your choice the hip is going to be divided by four quarter of the hip okay the knee is by two divided by two tie and lap is divided by two Anchor is divided by two. Then we also need our waist measurement here, okay? Our waist that we're going to be working with here today is 30, 36 inches. It's going to be divided by four, okay? So waist and hip is by four. Every other measurement is by two. Waist divided by four. Hip divided by four. Knee divided by two. Tie or lap divided by two ankle divided by two okay so once you have all of this measurement ready then you can start drafting your pattern I'm so now that we have all of our, all of our measurements ready the first thing i'm going to be doing here i'm going to be drafting the front and the back together okay just as it is on this my arm that here okay you can see the back and the front are all drafted together in one piece so i'm just going to be following the method like i said before in both of my arm that okay so i'm just going to add the method together to show us so i'll keep these ones aside so the first thing i want to do i'm going to be leaving a space at the top of my pattern of two inches okay So I'm leaving a two inch space at the top of my pattern around there. Okay. So after leaving that space of two inches at the top of my pattern, the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to now find the length of my trouser. Okay. So from that two inches line, I'm going to come down and I'll mark the length of my trouser, which is actually 40 inches. So I'll mark the 40 inches along here. Line, 
So then I'm going to add my seam allowance, my folding allowance also of two inches, okay? So after doing that, after adding my seam allowance, my seam allowance to the length of my trouser, okay? The next thing I want to do is to bring in my crotch depth. The first line I'm going to be bringing in now is my crotch depth. And remember, the measure from the measurement that we're using, our crotch depth is 11 inches. So because I'm using 11 inches, and I'm also going to be considering my waistband, because this trouser is going to have a waistband, it's very, very important, guys. So I'm going to be taking 2 inches away from my waistband. So instead of me uh, putting 11, I'm now going to be marking 9. 9 plus 2 is 11 because the 2 inches I took, I took away from my crotch depth is for my waistband. So now the crotch depth I'm going to have on this trouser now is going to be 9 inches. So don't always forget that you need to consider your waistband. If not, your crotch will be longer than you intend for it to be and you don't want that. Okay. So now I can write crotch depth. So the next measurement I'm going to be bringing here is the knee level. So for you to be able to find your knee, you are going to take a distance between your... You can either measure, okay? You can measure, but I've used this method. It's always working. It's in one of my hands as well, okay? You can measure the client's knee and take away two inches, okay? But you can also do this. So I'm going to measure from my crotch depth to my length, not to my seam allowance, just from my crotch depth to my length is 31 inches. Half of 31 is 15.5. Then I'm going to be taking one inch away from that measurement. So now I'm now going to be marking 14.5. Okay. So that's how I found my crotch, my knee length. This now, I can call this my knee. Okay? So the distance between my crotch and my length, half of that measurement minus one, then I have my knee length already. So now that I have my crotch, my knee, and my ankle, which is also known as my length. So remember, like I said before, I'm going to be drafting the front and the back trouser together in one piece. So the first thing I want to do is to bring in my hip measurement on my crotch depth like so. So the hip that we're working with is 44, quarter of 44 is 11. So I'm going to be bringing 11 around here. So I'm going to mark 11 inches here. I'll also come to the top of my, which is also known like my waist, to the top of my pattern, I'll mark 11 inches. That is my hip measurement. So you're marking your hip measurement on your crotch line. So I'm going to mark that around the 11 inches. So the next measurement you are going to be needing is your tie measurement, which is lap. Remember, the tie we are working with is 30. Half of 30 is 15. So I'm going to be putting 15 inches on this line. Like so. So I'm going to be putting 15 inches on that line. Good. So the next thing I'll do, I'm going to just come in here by 0 0.5 inches. And I'll make a nice, beautiful curve. You can use your curve ruler. You can use your hands to curve it, provided you have a nice curve. So I'm just going to use my hand to freehand it, okay? So the distance between this your curve, let me try to use a red pen. Here, so you guys can see what I'm doing. So the distance here is 0 0.5 inches. The distance from this my line to my crotch of is 0 0.5 inches guys so the next thing you want to do here you are going to now come over to this same line remember we have 15 inches here for my, for my tie measurement half of 15 inches is 7.5 okay so i'm going to mark that line 7.5 i'm going to bring the 7.5 all the way down to my length 7.5 7.5 until i get to my length so I'll take a straight from that. So that 7.5 is half of my time measurement, okay? So this line I'm ruling now is 7.5, half of my time measurement. So the next thing I'm going to be doing 
after that i'm going to come over here to my knee i'm going to be putting the knee measurement remember the knee that we're working with is 18 inches okay the knee is 18 and i said we should divide our knee by two knee divided by two we have nine good so i'm going to be putting nine on this part so i'm going to put 4.5 around here and i'm going to put another 4.5 around here so the total measurement i have now is nine so remember the knee that we're also working with is 14 so i'm going to be half of 14 14 divided by 2 is 7 so i'm going to be marking 3.5 here and i'll mark another 3.5 here to make up 7 so by the time i bring these two measurements together is 7 okay so now the next thing that i'm also going to be doing i'm going to come over here i'm going to come over here i'm going to now mark my waist measurement guys so now the waist measurement that we're working with is 36 quarter of 36 is nine inches so i'm going to put nine inches here so i'm going to mark nine inches around my waist area so i'll write waist okay so the next thing you will do after imputing all of your measurements is that simple guys you are going to take your curve ruler your hip curve you are going to curve your hips okay so i'm going to curve from my waist i'll curve it back down to my hip like so then i'll take a straight ruler from my hip line which is my crotch depth i'm going to curve it to my knee okay then i'll continue with the straight ruler to curve it down like so okay so you want to smooth in any sharp edge so now for this crotch part area you are going to now be taking your pants curve okay you need to have a pants curve some people call it a leg curve that is what you are going to use to curve here to meet this part okay so i'm going to use my pants curve like so to curve it from my crotch to meet my knee then i'll keep that aside then i'll pick a straight ruler i'll use a straight ruler to curve it to connect it down to my aim okay now our trouser pattern is as good as ready okay so if you notice there's no seam allowance at all in the front of this trouser all seam allowance goes to the back okay that is exactly what my hand that explains to me okay all seam allowance goes to the back of your trouser okay so but i'll explain something i say if you are going to be adding a dart to your trouser you need to create the allowance so now for this trouser i'm not going to have a dart that is why i only added my waist measurement okay but for this tutorial i'm only going to be adding a dart at the back of my trouser i'm not going to be putting that in front of my trouser okay so the next thing i want to do now is to start drafting my back pattern inside all of this front pattern so the first thing you will do you are going to come here you are going to increase this by one inch okay i'm going to add one inch here one one inch here one one inch here when i get down here i'll stop so for me to know to find out my back crotch depth i'm going to measure everything i have here 15 15 is my tie, half of my tie. Quarter of 15 is 3.5, okay? Am I right? I hope I'm right. Quarter, half of 15 is 7.5. Okay, 3.75, good. So that's quarter of 15, you are going to be putting it here to increase for your back crotch, okay? Everything you have in front here, you measure it, then you divide that measurement by four. That's quarter of that measurement. You use it to increase your back crotch, okay? The back crotch... Uh, the back uh, tie length is usually longer than the front reason be that there's a bum bum so you need your trouser to be able to go through the bum bum the front is flat and the back is not flat so you need your tie measurement to be able to go through that to fit you properly okay so and here i'm going to be adding one one inch and all i'll just do i'll connect it to meet this line and it goes all the way here so i'll take my ruler to rule that one inch okay okay let me use a red marker pen for the back so this is for the back and it goes like this like this and this is it so guys okay now so the next thing you are going to be doing you are going to now start adding all of your measurement to the back of your trouser okay 
I'm going to be adding 1.5 inches to the back of my trouser but I always say for a beginner if you have not been sewing trousers before like I tell a lot of my students you should add 2-2 two, two inches it's safer that way you know you're still going to be weaving your trouser on the inside and all of that but 1.5 inches is perfect it's fine but for a beginner if you are just trying to get used to making trousers you should add 2 inches you'll be safer that way okay so I'm going to be adding to two inches around here i'll add two inches to my tie i'll add two inches also to my ankle then i'll take my pants curve again then i'll connect from my crotch line to meet up here then i'll, I'll keep that aside i'll use a straight ruler to connect from my knee to meet up with my ankle okay so now that's the back so the last thing we're going to be doing for the back the back trouser is higher than the front trouser with 1.5 inches that's the reason why i left two inches around here so i'm now going to be marking 1.5 inches there okay i'm now going to be marking 1.5 inches around here so i'll take a straight ruler i'll connect it up 1.5 inches remember that line is for the back then i'll take my pants curve if you don't have a pants curve you can use your hip curve or your very curve to do this okay so i'll curve it back down from that part so the last thing that we're going to be doing now i'm going to be adding a one inch for my dad allowance for the back okay I'm adding one inch for that at the back okay i'm just adding it to the waist that's also for the back then i'll take my hip curve then i'm going to be curving that like so to meet up with the hip measurement so this is for the back hip back that allowance okay so for you to be able to Put in your dart allowance you are going to use your bust fan measurement this is the question i always get to ask so i'll just draw it out here for us to see so i'm going to come in here the bust fan of this client is 4.5 and the length of the dart is four inches okay so because i left one inch for that allowance i'm going to be choosing 0 0.5 0 0.5 on both sides away so i'll roll it all the way down and i'll connect So, I'm basically my pants trouser, my basic trouser is ready. It's basically is ready, okay? So, if you have any more questions, you can ask me. I'll probably be doing a video next time where I'll show us how to make a trouser waistband, okay? The curved waistband, how to create your trouser waistband, and also, also how to add your fly front zipper to your trouser so that might be my next upcoming video after i upload this video so if you find this video interesting please give it a thumbs up if you have any more questions please feel free to ask me any more questions in the comment section and i'll be glad to answer any of your questions and like i said before don't forget if you want any of this my under there's a lot in this under guys the suit block the lot color sports sleeve different kind of sleeve different kind of patterns you can find all of them inside all of this have a leg of mutton sleeve the under is packed double breasted neckline everything is here guys how to take accurate body measurement perfect basic bodies like basque waist everything is here in this under reglan sleeve so you can let me know if you want any of these under and i'll send them to you wherever you are in the world <laughs> or in nigeria rather so I'll probably be seeing you guys in the next video and I hope you guys enjoy watching this video as much as I did when I was making this video and I'll see you guys bye so I'm going to cut out all of the patterns now for you guys to see so we're going to be using this same pattern to cut out the back and, at the, and the front pattern as well at the same time so I'm just going to remove everything concerning the back because we're going to be cutting out the back first okay Side, and 
now come over i'll cut out this back shaping okay you know the back shaping and the front shaping is different so because the back is going to be having a dart so i'll cut this out as well so this is what we have guys so i'm going to be placing this pattern on my fabric i'll cut it times two and when i'm done cutting the back i'm going to eradicate this part for the back i'll just use my scissors to take it out i'm going to just take this allowance away for the back like so okay i'm actually going to be using this pattern for a client i'll take that out so i'm not going to trim it then i'll take this one out as well and this part as, as well this is also for the back then this part will be out as well then I'll, I'll be left with this for my front pattern okay but i'm going to be cutting the back first because everything here is for the back so let's say this is back okay this is back back then this also is back then this is back so all the red marker pen they are all for the back area so i'm just going to place it and cut out the back first so when i'm done cutting the back pattern i'm going to trim all of these parts away then i'll cut out my front front pattern